What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kel the Music Diva on Ladies Night, brought to you by Mesa Tableist, Cut It Up Music. I got a good friend of mine here. She is beautiful, she's sexy, and guess what? Ladies, she could hook you up with your nails <laughs> yeah. and much more. My girl, Risha. What's yes. up, Risha? What's up? Nothing much. Yes. Yes. How are you, babe? I'm good. Trying to, you know, live through quarantine like everybody else. <sighs> Ain't that so? Yeah, it really is. How, how's quarantine treating you right now? Um, it's, it's given me a lot of experience and a lot of time to really sit down and mm-hmm. just know myself. That's what quarantine and what they say, self care, self right? Self care. Doing self care, building my business, building my brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebuilding, should I say, rebuilding everything myself from the ground up. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. It's tough. Right, right. Well, speaking of which, your business. Um, you know, I visit your website and everything. Yeah. Uh, Miss Nail Technician, <laughs> and she does a bunch of other things. A bunch. A bunch of other things. <laughs> yeah, she's also a, a brand ambassador for a cannabis company, or no, uh, just a model. Oh, you're just a model <laughs> for okay, the company, okay. but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be a brand ambassador, but no, just yeah, I'm just a model for the cannabis. Company. Okay, okay. Well, tell us about the nails first, because we was talking about the nails. <laughs> Nicole likes to get her nails done too. She's a nail lady. We like to get the nails done. So tell us, how did you get into this industry? Um, so I always loved doing nails, even as a kid. Um, I used to always do my own nails, you know, sitting at the house, polishing them or whatever. Yeah. Um, I actually started off going to school for graphic design, which is how I ended up in like a lot of other businesses. Okay. And it wasn't until my mid-20s when I was like, I don't want to do this full time. I want to get out. I want to talk to people. I was always so shy as a kid. So I was like, I want to get out. I want to talk to people. I want to make people feel beautiful. I want to uplift people. And you can't really do that sitting behind a computer screen full time. So I was like, oh, well, how, what is it going to take for me to do nails? Because I don't like to do hair. I know nothing about hair, nothing about but skin care. But you're looking also. Oh, thank you. I'm but show. I know nothing about hair. So I was like, well, what does it take for me to do nails? So luckily I found a school and I went to nail school for about two and a half months. And ever since then, I've just been doing that full time. Wow. So they have nail school. Is, 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 is that, does that fall within the cosmetology So department? luckily the school I went to, they had a specific nail department where I didn't have to go learn the full cosmetology. So I'm just a licensed nail technician, not a full cosmetologist. Mm, okay. So that means you're only limited to just doing nails. You can't like do yes. anything else. I can dabble a little bit in skincare because it's a little bit of the same thing. But Your skin I'm not... is glowing too, by the way. So Thank you. Mm. Water and alcohol. <laughs> ah, shit. She's speaking my language. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, boo. Yes. Uh-huh. But no, uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm licensed in nails, so that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So you have your own actual nail business, or are you just an independent contractor? Like, you'll work for different salons if they hire you. So right now, I'm an independent contractor working mm-hmm. at one salon, and I'm also mobile. Um, mm-hmm. I've always loved doing events where, like, people host spa parties or... Um, they would have indoor spa parties or they would have company spa parties where, you know, literally thousands of people would come mm-hmm. and some people would get their nails done. So um, I also did events and mobile. So I'm kind of my own business, but right now I'm contracted. I'm looking to open my own salon. Yeah. Okay. Now, being in Oakland, and there's a couple of other nail technicians as well. There is a ton of nail technicians. So, are there more African American women tell, uh, nail technicians coming up? Because you know, um, yes. Yeah, so actually, when I went to school, uh, all of my friends were African American. They were black nail technicians. So I know like quite a few black nail te- technicians in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. But um, recently, there's been just like a rise of ones. A lot of them do them at home. There's not a lot that contract work in salons that I know of. There's a there's quite a few black owned nail salons and businesses that I know of. Really hope that once quarantine is lifted and everybody can go out that they will go and support their black owned businesses because there are a few like and I always tell my clients like you know I so I appreciate them coming to me but if for every reason they feel like I'm too far, I'm too expensive, too cheap, they don't want to come to me, I will send you to another black tech. Like it's no wow, problem. Just like, keep I it all would, within black. I will do you know that with no effort like yeah. no effort. But yeah, yeah, there is a rise and there is a lot and I'm just so proud because this is us, you know. Yeah. It's the culture, it's the art. Black so business. Glad, mm-hmm, and I'm so glad that women are 
looking to get into the beauty industry because we make up a good portion of it. So beautiful. Yeah. Now nah, that's real. Wait, do you know uh, who Miss Glitter is? Yeah, she uh, she I look at I look at her as a mentor. She, yes. she was the first salon that I worked yes. in actually and yeah, like I said, I look up to her as a mentor. She was just really here the other day with Gwen with Gwen Curry, like Oh for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her. So, yeah, she's amazing. She put me on a lot of games. Yeah. She's taught me, she helped me, she's watched me grow. And That's awesome. I, I reach out to her like every now and then, like, I just wanna thank you or you know, That's hey girl, up. how you doing? That's what's up. Keep it all in the family, yeah. man. That's what's up. Like showing love, helping one another. That's cool. So what were the challenges that you had to go through being a nail technician, especially African American? Because you know, primarily a lot of Asians do nails. Yeah, Vietnamese, <laughs> Vietnamese. And I'm from yeah. San Jose, so yeah, all they had was Vietnamese nail shops. Right. You know what I mean? So I mean, initially, honestly, I'm not going to say the name, but the school I went to, um, my first instructor was Vietnamese, and she hardly spoke English. So a lot of the stuff. When, like my first couple of weeks was self-taught like I had to just sit there read the book and ask my fellow like English speaking classmates like how do I do this what about this what about that so it was tough to even get through the nail school and then finally when I did excuse me I first started off out of a black nail salon which was great when I went to my second location it was kind of rough um just because of the community that I was in they kind of didn't think that I knew that I was doing what I was doing right so it was really tough because Overall, in the beauty industry, you have to be patient. You are creating a look for someone else, you know, in their vision, what they want to look like. So you have to be patient. But then to be basically like not what someone expects, and they're like, whoa, like this is different. For one, you look young. I always get that, like, you look young. Like, did you even go to high school? And are you 18? <laughs> And then yes. two, I always get, well, you know, at the other shop they did this, or at this shop they did that. And I was like, okay, yeah. well, I'm licensed. I know what I'm doing. So it was rough at first, but a lot of patience and a lot of mm -hmm. work, and you get you push right through it. So eventually, you said you're hoping to open your own nail shop once, you know, COVID happens. Mm -hmm. You want to open it here in Oakland? Um, somewhere in the East Bay. Um, my goal in the end is to open a creative studio. So not only for nails, but for skincare, for a lot of my friends that do art, that create cosmetic products. I know a couple people that sell lashes, that make lip gloss, that make lotion, scrubs. So eventually my studio will host all of that, um, give them space and opportunity to create and sell their products. And in my salon studio space, is like I like to call it. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That is so, and I am so supportive. Thank you. I will be there anytime you want to practice on a face or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're going to get your nails. We're going to get it yes, popping. Yes, we get the nails popping. Yes. yes. So tell me, like, the process with the nails. So you do, I mean, I'm not a nail person like I should be, but I had acrylics mm -hmm. a lot. What would you recommend that is best for women that are just, like, trying to start out getting their nails done? Like, you want to do acrylic so you can have short nails um well i think it's different for everybody um definitely if you have short nails it's kind of hard to just say yeah give me super long nails because then you don't really know what you're doing with these long nails or if you're used to having long nails it's kind of hard to say yeah chop them all off give me a basic manicure because then you're not used to it yeah so um some people also have like certain diseases or certain skin care um issues that don't allow them to get certain things done to their nails so Ooh. Um, yeah, because it's like it goes into the tip of the yeah, Um, the Sometimes chemical. people, yeah, it, exactly, yeah. the chemicals. So it just really depends for every person. I will always say try out your nail tech first. Do the most basic thing that you can do. Um, a basic manicure or a basic gel manicure. And see how that works out for you. See where you want to grow from there. Um, I always, I love doing natural nails, so I love doing gel manicures and I love doing overlays. That literally means just putting acrylic on your natural nail and just letting them grow out. Cut them however you see fit. And that's healthy for them. And it's a, it's a little bit more healthy because you don't have the tip, so if you break it, it doesn't, you know, break your whole nail off. But it's still acrylic, so yeah. acrylic is, you know, you just have to use it in moderation pretty much. Yeah. But I love natural nails. That's what I like to focus on. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. I would love to see you. Like, people tell me I have good nails. You do. I would love they're nice, to... long, pretty. Yeah. And, and I, I would get acrylics on. I'm surprised they're not damaged from the acrylics. Like, 
no, I love to rejuvenate nails. Like if someone comes in to me with damaged nails, I'm like, let me take care of you. We're not wow. just gonna, we're not just gonna keep repeating the cycle. We're not just gonna keep messing them up. We're gonna uh, regrow your nails. We're gonna make them healthy, and then we're gonna continue them. There. And they're still gonna be cute. Mm -hmm. They're still gonna be. Cute. So now it's just so crazy. Like you know, we're just talking about how it's hard being a woman. You know what I mean? Like, do nails make a woman? That's a tough question because the beauty industry is so broad. That's and, and maybe that's something that you can ask the guy because the man who's looking at the woman is like, oh, the leaves on point, her <laughs> eyebrows, her makeup, her nails, right? pedicure. Sometimes I get clients that come in and says, oh, my man said he liked that I had the white tip, the French tip. And that's what they get. Or sometimes she says, oh, today my man said that he loved the red on me last time and we redo it again the second time. So, I mean, it, it's such a broad, that's like such a broad aspect because, you know, what makes a woman feel beautiful could be her hair, it could be her shoes, it could be her smile, it could be someone else that makes her feel loved inside. For me, it is definitely the nails. Like, today my hair is done. Sometimes I don't care if my hair is done as your, long. Every time I see you, your hair done. You always look straight. Fair. I, okay, I presume. But sometimes <laughs> I can care less about every other aspect that someone is uh, but for me, like, I'm like, I need to do the feel. Like, I can't be showing my nails, like, looking like this. Like, they need to be done, you know? Damn. So, to me, nails are important. Yeah. That is part of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Let me... Darling, if you're in the front, uh, I'll have someone come get you, okay? Okay. I'm in the middle of the interview with my girl, so just <laughs> text me, okay? Okay, bye. <laughs> We had a little interruption there, you guys. Sorry about that. Anyway, back to Risha, okay? So, my thing with nails, like you said, some women are like, I care more about my hair. I care more about my, my eyebrows or eyelashes. Mm -hmm. And then eyelashes. I care about my nails. Mm -hmm. Are there other things that you think that make a woman feel more confident about herself? Definitely their physical body. Like, a lot of women now are altering their nose, their boobs, their butt, their Ooh. thighs their cheeks, everything. But I mean, to me, honestly, if it makes you feel better because you want to do it, then I'm like, by all means, go for it. Mm -hmm. If you want to make your nails longer because you're like, oh, I just love this look on me. It makes me feel like a woman. It makes me feel 100% at my highest, then go for it. You feel like I want bigger boobs because when I wake up and I look at myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. I'm going to feel at like my highest, then go for it. Do whatever makes you feel at your, you know, your true self. So you're pretty much kind of all for plastic surgery if a woman does. If, I mean, if that's what makes her feel comfortable. Yes, definitely. Yeah. What, have you ever thought about plastic surgery? No, at not at all. Not <laughs> that you need it at all. Like, you got it from head to toe. No, so. I wouldn't do it for myself, though, no, because I mean, yeah. me personally, I'm comfortable with myself, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about, like, a lot of these girls, like, on Instagram that, you know, they get a little sexy? I love it. I mean, honestly, I feel like, well, I hope that they're doing it because it makes them feel good. Sometimes I get on Instagram and I post these pictures because I'm just like, yes, like I already know my fam, my family, my friends, they're going to love this. They're going to think, ooh, I've seen some of them pictures. <laughs> I've seen some of them ooh, pictures. Look at Risha, she's doing this, and she's doing yeah. that. And the feedback that I get, it is, it is fun and it is like encouraging. But at the same time, sometimes I like to just go see myself like, oh, look, I did that. Like, that's yes. just me, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you don't even care about the likes or the comments. It's just yeah. like, like that's me. Right. In my In my natural form, uh, this is what I'm giving you guys. Yeah. And when you get older, this is something you can show your grandchildren. Like, right. well, grandma used to look like grandma was bad. <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. grandma had it going on. You know exactly. What I mean? <laughs> the same reason why anybody would take, you know, take a picture for a lasting memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's awesome. Okay. Can I ask you a funny question? And, like, you don't have to answer, but, like, Women with long nails, and I don't mean to sound ignorant, but women lo with long nails, how do you wipe the yes. foot? Yes. I mean, the same way that you do with short nails. Do you wipe with your fingers? And you get the... <laughs> you ain't gonna talk about shit again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get the toilet paper and you wipe, like... Mm -hmm. And so I always really, I really, really... I'm not even trying to be funny, sarcastic. I asked this question <laughs> back because I'm like, how do women with short nails wipe? Like, do they wipe with their fingers? Mm -hmm. 
I would hope not. I mean, I don't wipe with my right. fingers. Right, so right, would, right, right. <laughs> I mean, so that's hardly ever an issue. Oh, could someone but come get clean. Octavia? She's out front, please. I'm sorry. Wipes. Exactly. My butt is clean. My high knees clean. Wipes. Wipes. <laughs> wipes. My high knees clean. So basically, you use wipes. And no, that I mean, you can use, because wipes, toilet paper is all the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's yeah. not all the same. But you use a thick enough amount to where your nails won't get they through. Don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Cause Cause I, I have a little bit more toilet paper, but I mean that's the cost you gotta pay to be a long nail girl. That's true. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. Um, at one point I had dreads and they were uh, too tight to where I had blisters and Are vessels and my hip, my scalp was red. And I tried everything the first two days to get rid of it or whatever. And it was just really, I'm, I'm telling you, I just want, I thought I had to go to the hospital. But I remember my dude telling me, you got to pay the cost to be pretty, to be a lady. Yeah, pretty much. He was like. Not that, I mean, not that. That's a high. But that's what he was saying. He was like, because he didn't understand what I was going through. And he was like, that's the cost you have to pay. Deal with it. Because, I mean, you got them done, yes. Because it took them out, yes. But right. that's blisters and all that like I'll probably like, take these out yeah. and I did I damn near cut most of my hair out shit but kind of like what you're saying you know but with yeah, long I mean, nails you, yeah it costs a little bit more but work around it exactly just to like, be I mean just like it's, it's 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 yeah yeah to, to be yeah yeah it's true it's you want to be a, a doctor or a lawyer or whatever your profession is hours. put in them hours and make sacrifices exactly. yeah yeah Sacrifice long nails, having extra toilet paper. <laughs> use extra toilet paper <laughs> and use that good, um, what's that good toilet paper? My hiney clean, yeah, exactly. up my hiney <laughs> clean. Hi, <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, no, that, that's cool. Okay, so like, I was reading your bio and you said you wanted to get into this industry because in living color inspired you. Yes. Because it show. was all about color, being colorful? Um, no, so the show in Living Color, they used so many different cultures. Even though um, they were predominantly black, they still used so many different cultures and they made fun of like so many different cultures. But they still stayed true to, uh, I don't know how to say it. They still stay true to just being human, just naturally having fault in every culture. Mm -hmm. So really when I chose the name Live in Color, I had to work to make it trademark and all of that <laughs> yeah it's just to identify that there are so many different excuse me different beings so many different cultures so many different walks of life mm -hmm. but yet we still are human and we still all want to be beautiful inside and me doing nails mm -hmm. like I said I was a graphic designer so, mm -hmm. um, so art always remained a big part of my life just like I feel like a lot of humans um, art is a big part of their life but no matter what form you take it like music um, nails for you know uh, fashion because you popping over here uh -huh. productivity like it's all still a big part of art so that's where I got the inspiration from. that's amazing that is amazing and then like you said you do graphic design so that all kind of just comes together with the way still you art is, I still play with colors I still play with fonts it's still mm -hmm. a lot of different um, I still work with like a lot of different people doing graphics but it's still it still gets people that good feeling of, you know, putting on a fresh set of makeup in the morning and just looking at yourself like, yes, I'm ready to go. It still gets that feeling. Mm, yes, yes. So let me ask you, like, what does it take for a girl who's not really into makeup, not into nails and hair, how would she kind of start off, like, bringing herself into a situation where she's learning how to come into her own and find the right foundation, the right moisturizer? Mm-hmm. Honestly, uh, a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. That's really it. I mean, a lot of people, I hear a lot of people will say YouTube, go to YouTube because they teach you how to do this. But they teach you how to look like them because they don't, you know, I won't go on YouTube and do tutorials on short nails because I don't like short nails. So really, uh, me, somebody watching me doing a tutorial on long nails will only teach them long nails. But what if you're not a long nail type of person? Right. You have to do right. trial and error on yourself. So like for me, I've tried makeup since I was like 13 time and time again and I'm like makeup is not my thing like I can tell I you can't wear any makeup ever. you're a natural I like beautiful face like you feel me I fill in the brows a little bit and 
and that's pretty much it. Every now and You'll then, you'll do no I'll eyelashes. Get, either. No, every now and again, I'll do lashes. You have natural eyelashes, like natural yes, yes. long eyelashes. They're yeah. just curly. But every now and again, I'll get the extensions done. But I'm mm -hmm. like trial and error. Every time I'm like, this is just not me. It's not I. I personally don't want to do my own makeup. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of trial and error, mm -hmm. and just knowing yourself, knowing what you want to look like, not what somebody else wants you to look like. Right, right, like that's right, right. key. Were you ever a tomboy at one point? I'm like, always a tomboy. Yeah. Cause I can tell you got a little like, like <laughs> just you know what I'm I mean. Still, I mean, I kind of still am, but um, aside from nails, like everything else about me is like it just screams tomboy. You play basketball? I did. I, did I, I know. Can I can tell you got that look. Don't you got that basketball I did. look? How'd you like. Do? I was kind of mad though because I couldn't grow my nails out. Like I will always just have long pinky nails. But playing basketball. Yeah. So <laughs> imagine playing basketball with some long nails, girl. Excuse you know. me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, not possible. So yeah, can't do it right now. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Oh my gosh. And so let's talk about um, cannabis. So you're a model for a cannabis company. Yes. How'd you get into that? Uh, so I know the owner. Okay. And um, like I said, um, uh, aside from doing nails, graphic. I also direct photo shoots, so he actually wanted me to direct the photo shoot. Ooh. Um, I requested a couple models, one of them didn't show up, so I was like, I gotta throw myself in there, and last minute I threw myself in there. And you look good. Oh, thank you. You look good. <laughs> Wait, so you direct photo shoots too? Yes. I'm gonna have, you direct, my, well, I'm gonna have you direct one of my photo shoots. Yeah. I also what? directed the last two photo shoots for the Bay Area, the plug. Oh, so, shoot. Yeah, um, by Cash Entertainment. Exactly. So yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah. stuff that you see. On his social media currently, um, I directed that photo shoot. Styled oh, and wow. directed. That's amazing. It's all art. And I love it. That is all art. I can tell you're like so like relaxed and like therapeutic I about do. everything. It's like <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah. Like when I first met you, you were just so like easy to talk to and we yeah, just like started we talking. Actually I remember we were just going. I don't even yeah. know what we were talking about. Just and your mom was up. there and she was cool too. Like, it up. <laughs> Wow. So where do you see yourself in the next five years? Like like you said, you want to open up a major shop and you want to have, you know, um, you know, a spa, mm -hmm. nails. A whole studio. A I whole studio. I myself running that studio. Um, hopefully opening somewhere else if that one runs right in the next year or mm -hmm. two. And then um, eventually starting a family. You know, I'm old. not that old, but I am kind of getting older and I would oh. love to have a family. So I'm starting that. Do you have a special guy in mind? already or i mean you know i'm open i'm on the market so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about dating apps i hate dating apps but i feel like that's really the only way to date <laughs> like really i hate dating apps because it's like what do you do for a living what's your favorite color where do you live how many kids do you? it's so repetitive you know like over and over again mm -hmm. i feel like naturally when you meet someone it's you're already kind of in the same setting. Like if I meet somebody at a grocery store, you, mm -hmm. you live locally, obviously, because you don't live that far to become to this grocery store. But we, what about the club? And if we on the street? It's different. If you had a club, you like the club, <laughs> I like the club, you like to drink, I like to drink. Okay, match made in heaven already, right? Right, right. It's right. a little different. But I mean, I feel like right now, we're in 2021, really the only way we can date is online apps. So. Are you willing to take that risk though, dating a stranger during the pandemic? That is part of the thrill. Mm. Mm, it is. <laughs> it's like, imagine like you got to ask for some paperwork. Like, exactly. okay, have you been tested? Exactly. Have you been around anyone who's what have been you coughing? Been doing this yeah. whole quarantine. Yeah, 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 yeah. How um, is that? Like, have you ever, have you? Um, maybe like the beginning of quarantine, I've tried it. It wasn't bad because obviously there wasn't anything to do. So you really only know like a select few, pe a few people. Um, now I don't get out that often. Yeah, I'm yeah. working on my business. Oh, you working on your business. <laughs> you working on your business. Working on myself. Yes, yes. So, uh, do you plan on Ladies hiring other nail technicians under you? Even though you don't have a facility love. yet, do you still want people to work for you, like, virtually? Like, or, yeah. I don't know, virtually, um, whatever. Um, just people that work under you. So, like, I am my own Nobody's business. So, yes, eventually yeah. I would like to have other people helping me do my mobile pain. because it is uh, time-consuming and it is, like, a lot of traveling so eventually i'm gonna need help with that and then when i do eventually open up the studio i will like be looking for specifically about black male technicians to come work with me, not under me but with me. do you want to cater to just a black customer base no i like to cater to, uh, custom i would like to serve everybody living color i don't care what your background i personally would like to hire um a full black staff mm -hmm. um but like i said i live in color so anybody Everybody, as long as you're true to yourself and to your art, and 
you're delivering the greatest customer service, then it can, I really don't care what you look like or who you are. Um, you said you went to a nail tech school. Did you have to take any prerequisites to get there? No, so it was actually a cosmetology school, but they just okay. had the, um, a nail department. A nail department. Did mm-hmm. they just happen to have that, or it was like, no, we have a nail department, so yeah. anybody could come enroll? Yeah, it was like that. Anybody could oh, okay. come enroll. They, okay. They've been there for years. Like, I, yeah. I know a lot of nail technicians that are only licensed to do nails. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. So, what would you look for in a potential nail technician that's going to work for you and represent your brand? Somebody that loves what they do, first of all, because, like mm-hmm. I said, it's a lot of patience in doing them. So if you don't like it, if you're not going to sit there and listen to a customer for two to three hours at a time, maybe, you know, maybe, then you don't really need to be doing it because they want to look how they want to look and you need to deliver that. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, it's just customer service and then just being open with um, the rest of the team, whoever it may be everybody has different end goals mm-hmm. so I don't yeah. want like anybody to come in and think that they can't reach their end goal or yeah they, I don't want anybody to come in and try to stop somebody from reaching their end goal that's right that's right that's pretty much it you as the boss you get to filter all exactly. that out when exactly. you interview everybody my, like <laughs> exactly my number one goal is to help everybody reach their end goal no matter what it may be somebody might want to come in and get all this clientele base and open their own studio mm-hmm. and by all means go ahead because if that's what you want to do who am I to stop you mm-hmm. So. You all about that hustle. Exactly. <laughs> I like the bay. Yes, the bay. Yes. <laughs> and it's funny, you multitask so much because I be reading oh your Instagram my. post. What else do you be got going on? Why is no, I mean, um, aside from nails and then the graphic design, I also do website. I manage. That's right. You do website design and development, one, right? Yes. I manage only currently one website and I'm in the process of building someone else's website. Mm-hmm. Uh, brand ambassador for the plug as well as CEO for the plug. Running yes. my own business. Uh, and then I do do a uh, bottle service marketing like a little bit at night just because I hate being bored. So if I can find anything to do, I'm doing it. And she's good <laughs> at it too because she pours heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you kept me drunk at the, uh, where were we at? The rooftop? The rooftop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Downtown. Yeah. <laughs> you was exactly. like, you want another one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, mean, I put a little everything that I can. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. Do you plan on throwing your own events in the future for whatever... Yeah. With the Bay Area, the plug, that's what, uh, our, actually our second business under that is Cash Entertainment. So as soon yes. as we get the green light to open back up, we are doing parties. Yeah. Doing, uh, so we like to call it private events because we don't throw to the mass population. We throw Invite to, only. Exactly. Invite yeah. only and people that are like me and you about their business, about their hustle, that want to yes. network. Yes. And that, con- you know, consistently want to grow and do better for other people. Those are the people that we cater to. Mm-hmm. No, and definitely, uh, when you guys were doing the rooftop events, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if you have any more coming up, but I mean, those those were, it was just a great networking event. Exactly, you know what I mean? networking connections, knowing people, and especially in the Bay Area, because there's so many people that that are just, like I like to say, I like to say all my friends are bosses. There are so many bosses that don't know each other. Why can't we all grow together? Ooh, so you might want to start your own boss club. Look at you. You <laughs> didn't give me an idea. Look. Are you on Clubhouse? No, not yet. I'm getting there. It's funny, like I, I like seen people post about it, but someone invited me on there, uh-huh. and I'm looking at everyone who has a room. Like you should have a room. Really? Yes. Like I'm gonna get on. you would have so many people in there. Invite your friends, whatever, and, and you're just discussing nail, nail technician, beauty, Everything, all that. Right? You would fit right in on Clubhouse. I, I should get on. I'm gonna get on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you do any tutorials on YouTube or anything like that? No, I thought about it, but that's something else that's really time consuming. And because, like I said, I travel, especially during this, well, a little bit during the pandemic, I've been traveling a lot. It doesn't give me a lot of time to film and edit. So mm-hmm. I haven't been doing that yet. But I think I'm going to get ready to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would be awesome. Or do like a little trailer, commercial, reel, yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Just to kind of like show I people. Have to get uh, comfortable in front of the camera first. You comfortable yeah. now? You comfortable now? Uh, I mean, after a shot, we know we chilling. We chilling. Yeah, we chilling, right? We chilling. Look, we chilling. Shit, microphone attached to my wig. We chilling. So, (laughs) no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, I guess from your perspective, as far as growing a business, what would you give? What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs? Oh, take your time. Take your time. Take your 
first time. Like, that's literally what my mom keeps telling me. Like, girl, what are you rushing for? Like, you're just only 25 and you're going to get there. And then every morning I wake up like, but I got to do this. But I got to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, when I look back on it six months ago, I was just wishing and hoping and praying that I could move in, into my own place. I'm like, dang, this is never going to come. This is never going to come. Yeah. And now I'm finally comfortable in my own place where I can work and where I can grow. So oh. really just be, being patient and taking your time and making sure like, you see everything through. That's what I'm work. That's what I'm practicing right now is just being patient. Mm-hmm. And patience is a virtue. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean. <laughs> so no, that's cool. That's cool. Are there any particular people that influence you to do what you do? Yes, definitely. From like, like designers I or oh, or definitely. Anybody? Like I said, like my friend Tonia, she inspired me a lot because she's a true. Shout out to Tonia. Shout out to Tonia. She's a true hustler. Like, yes. She put in. She puts in her work. But she definitely inspired me to continue. Um, at, at a younger age to continue to do nails. My mom inspires me a lot because she's another true hustler from Oakland. You know, Ooh. she never she Yes, never your mama. Up. I talk to your mama. Yes, she don't she's a hustler. Like, yeah. 60 something years old. Um, she's still hustling. And for that, like, that's literally where I get all my motivation from. Mm-hmm. I could see how. Because when I talk <laughs> to your mama, she was like, look, you do this, you do that, and I do this and do that. She was helping you out at the bar that yeah. time. I was like, <laughs> damn, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she Wow, that's crazy, that's crazy. I want to get another tip with you, you know, more on a, a personal thing. Um, who are you listening to on your playlist right now? I listen to a lot of, um, I don't know if they would be considered Neo Soul or Indie, indie um, R&B, but I listen to a lot of, like, underground R&B artists. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you're familiar, there's an artist called Masego. He plays, like, a lot of different instruments, and he's, like, mm. he's very talented. Him. Okay. Um, I'm constantly listening to a group called The Internet. They they kind of do like a uh, mix between techno and R&B, but they're definitely still indie. Like I don't listen Ooh. to a lot of mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of soulful music is what I've been listening to lately. It, it just speaks more to me. Mm-hmm. And then like a lot of old school, like everything from like I don't even know a lot of old school artists. Yeah. I listen to. <laughs> now that's good. So it's like you like therapeutic music. Like right that. now, yes, that's what I'm focused on. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly because quarantine will drive me crazy. So if I'm listening to Nugget Be Buck every day, then I get, you know, you get agitated. <laughs> you get agitated. So I have to calm down a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I'm listening to Lil Wayne every day, then I just feel like I'm, I need to go and get something. But we're in quarantine, so I can't really get up and just go and do what I want to do. I can't listen to street music and be out in these streets. So I have to listen to something that, like, that speaks to me a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Are you like a fan of Guaple or yes, Sade? You know, they can have that. Sade, day. Yeah. I love Guaple. She speaks. She you can like smoke a blunt to her music. Right. And be like, clean the house. I love cleaning the house with some Guaple. Yeah. <laughs> clean the house with some Guaple. Yeah. yeah. I love her. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. So, any other projects you plan to put out or? Um, I do plan to focus more on directing photo shoots and maybe building a model uh, portfolio for myself Mm -hmm. right now i've only been freelancing to people that ask me to model but i've been thinking about doing it for clothing just to just to try something i mean it's not something that i would probably pursue a career in Mm -hmm. but i love directing and i love uh, being behind the scenes so that's probably something that i'll push more forward on aside from owning my own business so you're like more of the creative arts side yes exactly like i would say you're like a creative director Mm -hmm. from it could be from like wardrobe to makeup hair just from the top exactly like the creative director like you said behind the scenes even like managing websites behind the scenes as long as I'm not on the front Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) are you managing any clients at this point right now where you're kind of guiding them well in anything regarding art like you're just kind of guiding them in a certain direction or a few um, Mm -hmm. um my my personal um She's basically like the co-owner of my business. My creative director, I'm actually trying to talk her into getting to doing nails. So we yeah. have established um, a business out in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So we're getting on top of that. So I'm helping with her. Vegas. Mm-hmm. And then, um, no, that's pretty much it. I mean, aside from just helping every, like, you know, other people with small, smaller jobs, mm-hmm. that's pretty much what I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you plan on doing anything like for the community? Like, <clears throat> yes. right before I was actually talking to a few gentlemen who were cutting hair for the homeless in Fremont, 
And oh, I actually wow. grew up in Fremont, so I was actually looking to um, do nails and skincare for um, for the homeless in Fremont, for people that were looking to do interviews and, um, you know, just bas- basically like get a little jump start on their business or if they were looking to work for somebody, but, you know, they were homeless. So I was looking to, to do that. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. But then, you know, quarantine happens. So. Right, I have to put a pause yeah, on everything. Gotta wait a little bit just to be safe. Yeah. So I don't know. If, I don't know if I asked you this before, but what are you doing right now because of quarantine? How are you, like, advertising your business and what are you doing to promote and you know keep customer? Keep a a customer lot base. of Instagram. So which is yeah. you know, my personal is it's like fun because what people think is you know it's like oh this is my personal page. I've been like really getting my views up, getting my followers, getting my content and um, my interaction up, so that when I am ready to release my personal business, then I can have the same same support if that makes sense so i've been really focusing yeah, yeah. on content I, and i see that too mm-hmm. like you're getting really creative with your content you're well, getting a lot of you. likes a lot of followers a lot of comments thank a lot you. of interaction a lot of engagement yes engagement is yeah. what i'm focused on yeah more so than the likes i'm focused on the engagement so that that's what it's know, about so people yeah. know me and i like to get to know people too so engagement yeah because it's, it's nice when someone points out something about you that they like and they write exactly. about it you right. know what i mean exactly like, and then, like I said, I like to get to know these people. So uh, um, a lot of times people that you see that are common, I actually know them personally. So if they ever feel like they want to hit me on the side, like, hey, you know, this happened or you need to do this or I've seen this. Oh, my, like, okay, thanks. Like, it's a constructive criticism from people that I know personally rather than, you know, random people on the Internet. Mm, then you know a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> because you have a lot of comments. Like, <laughs> I mean, no, not that many, but I do know. I, like I said, I like to. Yeah. So are you always attending networking events or, yes, you know, whether I it's try. through Zoom or... Mm-hmm. Yes, I yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, beauty and cosmetic events, mm-hmm. something like that. Yes, I try to get to do all of that, actually. I'm introduce you to uh, my friend Nicole. She's a makeup artist and she has a clubhouse room with a lot of people. You'd be a great guest for okay, that show. Okay, then, yeah. Yeah, because she's looking for, you know, people who are in the beauty industry. Right, then, yeah, I love them. You know what I mean? And you can just, like, talk about everything. To get in and hear yeah. other people's Exactly, exactly. And then even like show pictures, visuals of your work. You know what yes, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And what's your website again? Because I visited your website and I saw you were um, featured actually in a popular magazine, Go Girl. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, yes. But tell people your website so they can go see all that. So it's liveincolor.online. So my whole brand is Live in Studio. Um, it's a domain name, blah, blah, blah. It's Live in Color, L I V E I N dot online. Woo! And last question though, how did you get in that magazine? Because you've got a nice feature Honestly, on that. Honestly, okay, so they promote all the time, but I just felt, I felt a different type of blessing because the owner and the creator behind this magazine, she's, um, what's her name, uh, Pilar. She's like really big in the fashion industry and she's like a, a really big fashion director. Like I just love her whole little energy. She actually um, DM'd me personally to get put in, to get featured in the magazine. Because she's been following you, yes, right? like yes. watching all your work. Yes, yeah, so finally I was like, okay, let me see what this is about. And I like looked in a little bit on her and her background and I was like, yes, like she's just like me, started from the ground up, like from nothing, from scratch, and just really I, working and hustling. Yeah. I was like, yeah, let me get in this one, let me put in on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty, oh, oh, on your website, I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm, I, I sent you your own website. Yes, I made my own website too. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I was just reading all the content on there. I was like, I was just featuring the magazine, and then yes. you got inspired by a living color, like, and yes. she does, you know, Fashion God things. magazine, by the way. Fashion GXD. Ooh, magazine. get that right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Risha, I hate to end the conversation, but are there any last words that you would like to say? the crowd to the audience just live in color be true to yourself and thank you for having me thank you you guys that's my girl risha <laughs> ladies night with kelder music on well brought to you by cut it up music mason table is <laughs> you guys have a great night and peace